Hi everybody, it's Mr. Edify once again, and welcome back to video three on how to get slope from a line. Now, I want you to first notice this uh, this line is different from the lines in the two other videos before this. And just to quickly show you again what that difference is, if you look at the line from video two is increasing. So this, this line, if you're thinking about this in terms of going on a hike, this line would be increasing. As we saw in our slope before, we had a slope of 4, and that slope is definitely positive, which coincides with our understanding that this line is definitely increasing or going in a positive direction. In the first video, we looked at a line that is clearly decreasing or going down, if you think about it in terms of hiking. And when we finally got our slope for this, as you can see over here, our slope was negative 8 over 5. And that negative part corresponds to the line going down or decreasing. So we looked at a decreasing slope, a negative slope, an increasing slope, a positive slope. And now we finally look at something that is neither increasing nor decreasing. And what would you call that? Well, to answer that question, let's take a look over here. If you think about a number line, a number line is divided into two clear sections, a positive side and a negative side. Well, the reason why there's a split is because we have one number doing that job. It serves like serves as a wall, and that number is a number zero. And the number zero, as you may know, is neither positive nor negative. And so something that doesn't take sides is always called neutral. So zero can be considered to be a neutral number. It doesn't take sides. It's a very peaceful kind of dude. So zero is a neutral number. And that has a lot to do with this guy over here. Because this line is neither increasing nor decreasing. So that means in terms of a, a number for the slope or the change in uh, the rate of change, this line is probably not going to have a positive or a negative on its number, in which case it can only mean one thing, that the slope of this line must be the number zero. Ah, well, let's figure out exactly how that happens. So I'm going to go ahead and start with choosing these two points, giving them each a name. So A and B. Point A is at positive 2 and negative 1, whereas point B is at positive 3 and also at negative 1. And oh, did you catch that? I just said the same number twice. And if you missed it, it was a number negative 1. And that's not a coincidence. Okay, negative 1 does show up twice. And the reason is this entire line, the whole thing, is, ex is exactly one level below the x-axis. It's one level down. And I'm comparing it to this one here. That's your x-axis. So if you look at the blue line and you compare it to the green highlighted line, which is the x-axis, you can see that it's exactly one drop or level right below. And so this entire line containing all the points, all the points will have a y-coordinate, an output number of negative 1. Okay, so what I can do with that is jump right into writing my change in y and my change in x. So remember, this represents the change in my y's. And this represents our change in our x's. Now, there will be times when things do not change yet we still have to represent it as though they are. And in this case, that's definitely something that is going on. So if we first look at our y's, and again, you, you want to always look at your y's first because when you read a fraction, you always read the numerator first. And so that's what you have to do first. What you read first is what you do first. So change in y's first, then change in x's. Anyway, our y coordinates are negative 1 and negative 1 from point A to point B or point B to point A. doesn't matter. So I'm going to write negative 1 and negative 1. And the idea of change, in the last video I explained, change is represented by subtraction. Okay, Something turning into something else. 
changing into something else. But in this case, you can see negative 1 doesn't seem to be changing into something different. It stays itself. Hmm. So what happens with that? Well, we'll find out in a second. But for now, I'm going to bring in my friendly parentheses, which helps our eyes to see a separation between these two negatives. And then our brain knows what to do with it. In our denominator, we have a change in x's. So since I, I'm going from a to b, um, I'm going to put my 2 here and my 3 there for my x's. And my change, again, is being represented with a minus sign. All right. So what's happening here is we're getting a positive out of these two negatives which would be negative 1 plus 1, because the opposite of negative 1 is positive 1. 2 minus 3 ends up becoming a negative 1. Okay. Now, when we go back to the numerator, you can see negative 1 plus 1 becomes a 0. Oh, a 0? Well, hang on. That's a neutral number. Neutral number. Neither positive nor negative. It's its own It's its own type of number. Zero is neither positive nor negative. Oh, I went way too high. So there's a zero. Our denominator is still negative one. When we divide zero with any number, as you may know, what you get is just zero. Hmm. That means that our change in y or our change in x, or our slope, became the number zero. So what does that mean? How do we understand that? If we look carefully at this, what this means is that this is a neutral line. It's neither increasing nor is it decreasing. It is flat. So if you're going on a hike, looking back at uh, example one way up here, you'd be going down, right, at one point. Maybe you go up at another point, And then eventually you might reach a point on your hike where you're not going up or down, yet you are still moving. And so that's what this line represents. You're still moving, however, you're on level ground. And so your slope has to show that. Numerically, zero means level, even. And so this is one case, okay? In another case, we have a graph like this, example four. In example four, this is kind of interesting because we probably would never encounter a line situation like this if you're on a hike, unless you're hanging from a rope or something. But if you're going on a casual hike, this neither means increasing, decreasing, nor does it mean level ground. So something that is not positive or negative or zero, what would that be? Because usually numbers are are going to be one of those three things. A number will be positive, a number will be, will be negative, or a number might be zero. So what do you do when something is not any of those three above, then what is it? And to find out, we will once again use our change in y over change in x. Okay, And I'm going to choose two points here since none are given to me. I'll choose one there, and I'll choose another right there. A here, B right there. Point A is at uh, negative 1, 2, 3. So this is at negative 3, and I'm up 3. Point B is at negative 3, but I'm down 1, so negative 1. So logically, thinking about it this way, to go from A to B or B to A, if we count squares, going from A to B would require changing your, your Y number, which if you look carefully, is over here, I'm changing from being at level 3 to being at level negative 1. So if I were to do that on this picture here, this graph, it would be 1, 2, 3, 4. I would go down 4, which would be a negative 4. Okay? So I'll put that over here, negative 4. Now if you look carefully, I'm already at point B. I, I usually have to do a two-step dance here where I, where I go up or down, then I go right or left. Here, I just went straight down, and I already arrived at my destination, point B. I don't have to go right or left at all, because I'm there. So if, you're not, if you don't have to go right or left, your change in X 
is zero. That zero means I didn't move right or left. I just went down four times. That's what that means. You went down four times, you did not move anywhere. So here's the, th here's the issue though. If you were to divide negative four by zero, we wouldn't be able to. If we can try it, watch. If I try to uh, think of a number times zero that makes negative four, let's say I put a four here, four times zero, oh man, it didn't work. I still get negative four. Oh, let's try another one. That didn't work. What about negative four divided by zero? What if I put a zero? Well, zero times zero is zero. Oh man, it didn't work again. I got negative four, see? And nothing works. So I used up all my options already. That's because nothing, nothing multiplied by zero will give you a negative four. You cannot multiply anything with zero and get a result that is a number other than zero. So there's nothing up here that works. Oh, too bad. But it doesn't work. And in math, if something like this doesn't work, there's a word to describe it. When we cannot come up with an answer, a numerical answer, that means that we cannot define it by saying, for example, the answer is 5. We cannot define the answer with a number. So we say the answer is undefined. The answer, in other words, is that there is no answer. And so in this case, the slope of this line is non-existent. We can describe the motion along the line by using the change in y's, but that would be the only way we could do it. There is no change in x because this line is snapped right on um, always at x is equal to negative 3. And any point that I choose on it, for example, this one here, the x-coordinate will always be negative 3 something. In this case, it's negative 3, negative 4. If I choose another random point like this, this is negative 3, negative 5. If I choose another one here, this would be negative 3, negative 2. All of these begin with the same x-coordinate, which is negative 3. And for that reason, we have an equation for this line, which is x equals negative 3. And that just means this line is always going to be stuck there, but it will always go up and down forever. So if you want to talk about how to go from one point to another, just talk to me about how the y's are changing. Because I can't talk to you about the x's since they're not changing at all. And so that's how we write the slope for a line that is vertical. And this is true for all vertical lines. Now, to finish up this video, I want to show you um, just quickly using the original two points that we had, which were getting rid of that over there, change in y or change in x. Numerically, mathematically, it would, it would be this. So I would go from 3 to negative 1 changing from a 3, changing into a negative 1. Again, use parentheses to separate it. And then for the x's, I have negative 3 and negative 3. Now, I do have to represent the idea of change, although technically down here the x's are not changing. So negative 3 changing into negative 3 doesn't really make sense logically, but we represent it anyway for the sake of the math. So this becomes 3 plus 1. And this becomes, I forgot my parentheses, this becomes three, negative 3 plus 3. In the numerator, I get a 4. And in my denominator, I get 0. Okay, so my, my answer, once again, is undefined. Now, if you're wondering, well, hang on, Mr. D. You got a 4 over 0 here, but here you got a negative 4 over 0. Well, what's up with that? The answer to that is that on a, on a vertical line, you can go either up or down. So if you choose to go down, your 4 would be negative. But if you choose to go up, it would then be positive. But you're still moving along the same line. So I hope this video helped you um, understand better how to get slope from a line by counting squares, by uh, doing, it, doing it more mathematically, thinking about it in a more logical way. If you have any comments, please post it on the video uh, website itself on YouTube, or you can leave your comments on Schoology in the discussion board. I um, look forward to seeing you again next time, and you take good care. Bye-bye.